Good morning, my name is Josh from Cycling Soz. Happy Friday, and today we do have quite a bit to get through in this forecast update. First off, Category 4, severe tropical cyclone Neville barreling offshore from Western Australia. Then we're going to take a look at far northern Queensland and talk about a potential tropical low that could develop in the Coral Sea and its impacts expected for the far northern Queensland coastline. And then we'll give a little look at the Easter Day forecast. Sunday the 31st of March, it is now on the forecast in the 10-day, and we should be able to get a bit of an idea on what is expected for Easter. Skip around to what part of the video suits you the most in the chapter section in the description or on the scroll bar just below the cursor right now. But first off, starting things off of course with severe tropical cyclone Neville. This storm has blown me away, that's for sure. It is a very powerful category 4 strength severe tropical cyclone at this time and it's probably getting stronger as well. I did say that it would have about 48 hours of very favourable conditions and let me tell you it has made the complete most of said favourable conditions. I've been talking for for the past couple of months about how concerning the conditions are offshore from Western Australia, that they could sustain a Category 5 strength tropical cyclone. And I mean, look at this. They are basically doing it right now. It looks like Neville is going to make a run for Category 5 status throughout the morning hours of today and maybe into this afternoon. It will be the first Category 5 strength severe tropical cyclone in almost a year since Cyclone Ilsa, April 2023. That was the last one, and this storm really looks like it's going to be doing it. The good news is, of course, is that it is no threat to land. I mean, it's a tiny system, so it's got very, very small um, impacts around its centre, albeit these impacts are pretty extreme, so if you are a ship or a fishing vessel in the area, uh, highly advised to avoid the storm at all costs, because wind speeds of 250 kilometres an hour are in the centre of the storm, and it is a very dangerous one, um, of course. And this is a type of storm where you can only get an idea of how strong it is based off satellite appearance, because if we were to take a look at the forecast models, right now, the peak winds in the storm centre of 76 kilometers an hour. Obviously, the storm is far stronger than 80 kilometer an hour winds. Uh, we're probably talking about peak wind speeds of closer to 180 kilometers an hour. Um, it's initialized with a pressure of 999 millibars as well. This probably has a pressure of around 935 to 940 millibars. So it is a very deep storm in terms of central pressure. Thankfully, though, as I said, it is no impact to the Australian coastline. It is a tiny system, that's for sure. And if it is to round out this eye anymore, it, it's an exquisite looking system on satellite imagery, but if it does get this eye squeezed down any more or any better, then we are going to be looking at a Category 5 strength severe tropical cyclone. It's already a very borderline case at this time. I do believe that the Bureau of Meteorology might upgrade it next advisory, but um, again, it is the Bureau of Meteorology. They generally are very conservative when calling for a Category 5 strength tropical cyclone. But yeah, a very, very impressive system in terms of appearance. Just briefly checking wind observations here. doesn't look like there's any ships in the area, which is good news because this storm, again, would be throwing out waves approaching 30 feet in height. Even the forecast models are saying that there's going to be waves probably around that 25-foot mark uh, it's more sort of 20 to 22 foot more mark, uh, but still very, very high waves around the center of circulation, uh, very extreme wind gusts. This is a very powerful tropical cyclone, and it is a good thing that it is very small, because if it was a very large tropical cyclone, even though it is moving away from the West Australian coastline, its impacts would be felt around Exmouth, Carnarvon, Shark Bay, Coral Bay, that sort of area. Uh, so that is some very good news indeed. But yeah, I just can't get over how beautiful this system is looking. I didn't expect to wake up to a system system looking this good. It was actually struggling a little bit with wind shear yesterday, and it does look like it's still struggling with wind shear. Um, considering it is a small tropical cyclone, any amount of wind shear in the environment will give it a very hard time, and that does seem to be the case right now. Uh, however, it's still looking very, very decent, um, and it's certainly got another 12 to 24 hours of very favorable conditions until it does slowly start to weaken. But then again, weakening will be very slow beyond the two-day forecast period because it is at such a tremendous intensity. Right now, the sea surface temperatures are average at best. It's actually going over a bit of a cool spot right now, 27 degrees Celsius, still more than enough to sustain a Category 4 strength severe tropical cyclone on the Australian scale, but it will struggle to um, intensify the storm up towards Category 5 status. So I do expect some weakening over the next few hours. And if you do keep an eye on the satellite imagery, some of the more nerd viewers that do enjoy looking at satellite imagery and so forth, um, you will notice that the cloud tops will start to warm and wane 
over the coming few hours as a result of this, but it looks like it might get itself over another warm patch in around 12 hours time, and it might be able to intensify it one last time there. So if it was going to do an eyewall replacement cycle, which is a pretty complex thing for a tropical cyclone to do, and it's a complex thing to understand as well, then it will likely have a little bit of a harder time to do it over the next uh, 12 hours. Although I do think that it might have been able to do one just recently. Nonetheless, though, there's only so much information that I can give on this storm. It's moving out to sea. It's a small tropical cyclone, and it is a very powerful one as well, and beautiful too. I mean, it's got a beautiful structure, very, very photogenic-looking system, and it is quite far away from the West Australian coastline at this time. That basically does it for a tropical cyclone Neville for now. We're going to jump across to far northern Queensland, where we do have a potential developing tropical low up there. Taking a look at the rain radar, you can see there is quite a bit of rain actually moving through the far northern regions of Queensland. We've also got some rain across the Northern Territory, which we'll touch on in just a few minutes. Um, but yeah, quite a few heavy showers moving through the Cassowary Coast right now. I believe there's been places around Cooktown that have picked up, you're talking totals of 200 millimeters in the past 24 hours. So it has actually been wetter than what the forecast models have been saying. And if we were to extrapolate that over the coming couple of days, then uh, we could probably be looking at maybe about 50 to 80% more rainfall than what the forecast models are suggesting in the next Next sort of 24 to 48 hours um, and yeah that does seem to be the case I did say that Friday and Saturday were going to be uh, quite wet especially Saturday morning by the looks of things there's going to be some heavy thunderstorms that move through uh, areas between Lucinda and Cooktown I know it doesn't really look like it on the forecast models right now the axis does have a better look at it but you're going to have a weak low pressure system towards the Lockhart River and that's going to be driving some of this heavier rainfall ashore so over the next 24 hours I'd be expecting in a ballpark of around 100 millimeters to all around Cairns, maybe about 100 to 130 millimetres around Innisfail and Tully, and then up towards Port Douglas, Woodgill, Woodgill and Cooktown, probably talking up towards 150 millimetres, which of course is far more than what the forecast models are suggesting, but I do reckon that under the right shower bands, there'll be places that pick, uh, that pick up a lot more rainfall than what's expected. I do really want to put in um, a little bit of research and a little bit of um, information out there on the rainfall patterns up in far northern Queensland, because the models just very rarely get them right and I want to see if there's some way that I can develop some kind of information base uh, regarding this so that's going to be a bit of a winter project here on the Cyclone Zoz channel uh, expect a lot more long form videos that aren't going to be of the forecasting nature uh, just more sort of the information and knowledge based nature uh, as we start approaching into winter and there's less tropical activity to be tracking because that is something that I would love to do on this channel as well let me know if you're interested in that in the comments but yeah quite a bit of rainfall expected up here you're probably talking well the forecast is saying up to towards 80 millimeters or so. So it's probably going to be significantly more than that, especially under the right shower band. And I use the next 12 hours as an example. I mean, Cairns is expecting no rainfall in the next 12 hours from the, when this video is being recorded. But I mean, look at these heavy showers that just the forecast models can't pick up and initialize. Uh, and they do have rainfall, these heavy showers, they pack 10 to 15 millimeters an hour sort of rainfall. And some of them even more than that, I mean, um, this is quite heavy rainfall here, so the forecast models generally aren't too good at picking up on these, which is why rainfall totals can completely blow out in far northern Queensland. I know it's definitely not the heaviest rainfall around the nation right now. There is rainfall occurring across the Northern Territory, and in fact, they're expecting quite a bit of rainfall as well throughout today from the former thunderstorms. But again, the Northern Territory and a lot of Queensland is going to be dominated by pulse thunderstorm activity over the next three to five days. And it's just gonna be nonstop, uh, to be fair. A lot of thunderstorm activity, a lot of rainfall can be expected, and I'll touch on that in just a little bit. But first off, that tropical low that I've been saying could develop um, in around later next week. Well, it is still expected to, something to happen over uh, the uh, Coral Sea. There is still the chance we do see a very wide, broad tropical low start to develop, and that's going to be driving a lot of rainfall ashore. Both the eastern, uh, both the GFS rather and the Axis model are suggesting a very wet end to the week and entry to the Easter period uh, with good. Friday and Easter Saturday expecting at least 100 millimeters a day each, uh, maybe a lot more uh, in terms of rainfall for Easter Saturday and maybe even into Easter Sunday as well for the canned sort of area at this time. And that is again reciprocated more or less amongst the GFS model. The GFS kind of has this rainfall occurring about 24 to 48 hours before the Axis G3, but it is in a very similar motion and a very similar area to what the Axis does have suggested. So that means that there is good model congruency in regards to what is going to 
be happening. Just the only variation is the time, which will be ironed out properly by around next Monday and Tuesday. Those days are when I'm going to be giving the really good detailed forecast on this system because we will have a good idea on what's going on. It is not going to be a tropical cyclone. It's probably not even going to be a classifiable tropical low. It's just going to be um, a bunch of rainfall from the monsoon trough that's set up over the Coral Sea that's going to be driven ashore and really just drives that rainfall um, accumulations up through the roof. Uh, so again, the risk of flooding certainly is there. Uh, the risk of um, landslides and so forth and associated risks with flooding are also very much there as well. And over the next 10 days, we're probably going to be seeing rainfall totals approaching that 400 millimetres, maybe even more actually up towards 500 millimetres or so across areas uh, between Cape Tribulation down towards Innisfail. Uh, the axis does have significantly more rainfall on the forecast, but again, a very, very similar forecast in terms of details to what they had yesterday. So this is going to be something interesting, and it does look like we do have something uh, with very good model congruency now. Um, and I'm quite confident in saying that it will be a wet end to March up here on the Cassowary Coast and the Daintree Coastline as well. The rainfall probably won't penetrate too far inland as well. I mean, areas around Atherton, Mariba, Raven, so on and so forth, probably only going to see around 50 to 80 millimetres uh, from this rainfall event. And a lot of that could actually be from pulse thunderstorm activity. So there could be far more rainfall or far less rainfall than what's expected. So yeah, it will be interesting. But this rainfall also looks like it extends down the coastline um, as per the access forecast and to a degree the GFS forecast as well down to Townsville and Ely Beach. So we'll be watching out for that too. Once again, this is kind of a disorganized forecast. It's more so of a heads up on what's going to be happening. There'll be much more information, reliable information as well on Monday and Tuesday. So stick around for that. And there's no better way to do that than by subscribing. Thank you so much for the recent support on the channel recently as well. Now, over the past couple of days, we've been talking about a very significant amount of rainfall across parts of Central Australia uh, throughout New South Wales, South Australia and into Queensland. Well, that's still very much so on the forecast. There is a bit more uncertainty in regards to where the rainfall is going to be occurring. The Axis G3 says that it's going to be more a New South Wales and Victoria based event with parts of Eastern South Australia um, in the mix as well. But the Eastern RF and the GFS models, which are the forecast models I like the most, are saying that it's going to be a Queensland and a South Australia event. Now, the Queensland rainfall is going to be very unpredictable. Um, especially in the uh, three to sort of five day forecast period. There's going to be a lot of pulse thunderstorm activity in the evenings. Not so much today. Today, we're going to have that pulse thunderstorm activity for the Northern Territory and parts of uh, extreme Western Queensland, but it's going to be more so in towards Saturday where we see these strong thunderstorms and heavy rainfall moving through central Queensland. And then also into uh, Southeastern Queensland as well around Brisbane area where they could dump about 50 millimeters or so through Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. And and then the thunderstorms really do ramp up in terms of pulse thunderstorms Wednesday and Thursday there. But yeah, over the next two to three days, expect significant rainfall across the Northern Territory, Queensland and South Australia, which will be from pulse thunderstorms and heavy rain showers that move through the area. And then it looks like we get another thunderstorm event still associated with the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Megan through South Australia and the Northern Territory come Easter uh, time, which I do also believe is reciprocated amongst the Axis GFS or not the GFS actually, and the Eastern F model. So that is going to be something we're going to watch very closely too. Um, what I would love is if the Eastern F jumped on board with the Coral Sea system. If the Eastern F jumped on board with the Coral Sea system, then I'd be much more confident in saying what's going to be happening in regards to that system. So again, that is a little bit annoying, but the Eastern F generally does know what it is doing in terms of being a good forecast model. So we'll just let it carve its own path. And it seems like we're talking about a summer pattern again for Western Australia. Western Australia just missing out on all of the rainfall, which is quite sad because I'm really looking forward to the first winter rainfall um, of the winter season. I did also say that there might be a little bit of rainfall associated with the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Neville as it moves south through Western Australia come around Easter time for the Perth area, but that doesn't look like it's going to be the case anymore with Perth remaining high and dry for the next 10 days right through and towards April. And April and May are typically pretty dry months as well. We very rarely do you see a lot of rainfall through April and May, but it's typically around May, in fact, around my birthday time that we see the first big front start to move through 
um, which again, I'm not looking forward to because big fronts are quite nasty fronts, especially where I live. You can get some very nasty winds whip up the seas and my car generally just gets covered in salt. and I'm just left cleaning it every other day, which is quite annoying. But again, I'm complaining about something I'm really looking forward to here because some nice winter fronts would be fantastic. And I am looking forward to the first one, that's for sure. Um, and yeah, it's definitely still a tropical pattern with the northern Kimberley region still receiving some significant thunderstorms. It just doesn't look like the wet season wants to quit up there um, at this time. Typically by around March, things do start to quieten down. And things are looking like they're quietening down, but there's still, of course, the risk that we get another tropical cyclone up there. Neville, certainly an interesting system, that's for sure. Blown my socks off. That's, uh, I think that goes without saying. Um, and yeah, it's just a lot stronger than I did expect. It's the first tropical cyclone since tropical cyclone Ilsa in the West Australian region, so nearly a year. And it's the first category five strength tropical cyclone in also nearly a year. Uh, typically speaking, you get a one category five every two to three years up in the West Australian region. So we're definitely in a busy period for category five systems because Neville looks like it is going to get towards category five status. Um, I don't really doubt that at this time. It's just a matter of if the Bureau of Meteorology calls it because they're generally very conservative on stuff like that, but still a very remarkable system indeed. That basically does it for today's weather forecast. Thank you so much for your company this Friday morning. It's been a pleasure having you watching. Make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe as well, click the join button to get access to some sweet perks, and I will catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.